It seems like everyone and their mother is making money in real estate investing right now. So can someone please explain to me why I just had to bring $5,463.43 to closing for my latest fix and flip project. Hey friends, my name is Sunny and I'm a real estate investor based in Northeast New Jersey. And on this channel, I share my experience in an effort to help you start or grow your real estate investment business. In this video, I'm going to outline how I vaporized $80,000 of gross margin potential in as little as nine months. But before we get to the exact line items, let's do a quick recap of how we got here today. In June, 2021, we bought a duplex in Madison, New Jersey for $485,000. In October, 2021, we signed a purchase and sale agreement for $560,000, but we didn't end up selling that property until March of 2021. It took an extra five months to sell the property because of an easement issue that we had with the neighbor. To be clear, we spent zero dollars making any improvements to this property. This was supposed to be a quick in and out wholetale, but it ended up dragging on. And as you'll see, those extra five months of carrying costs really dug into our bottom line. So without further ado, let's go over how we burned $80,000 in just nine months. Let's start with acquisition costs. I actually outlined all of these costs in another video titled top 10 hidden costs when buying real estate, but let's go over them again right now really quickly. Between origination points and lender's fees, my hard money lender charged us $6,200 in exchange for a $363,000 purchase money loan. Between title insurance, recording fees, and admin fees, I paid out roughly $4,400 to the title company that facilitated this transaction. My attorney's legal fee upon purchase was $1,500. There were probably another $1,000 or two in miscellaneous costs before buying the property. However, the bulk of my acquisitions costs came out to $12,000. Now let's talk about carrying costs. The insurance premium on this property is just under $200 per month. Over nine months, that came out to $1,800. The property taxes on this property are $8,100 per year. Over nine months, that came out to $6,000. However, we had to pay an extra $350 in interest because we were delinquent on our property taxes. I typically don't pay property taxes on a fix and flip project that I intend to exit within 12 months. The reason is the interest that they charge on property tax is anywhere from eight to 18%. I'd rather pay the interest when I sell the property than pay the property tax mid-project. Finally, I used 100% financing on this deal. My hard money lender gave us a purchase money loan for $363,000 and I found a private money lender to gap fund us for $152,500. The total loan amount here was $515,000 and I was paying 8% interest only on that money. 515,000 times 8% divided by 12 times the nine months that we held the property is $31,000 in interest only. Between insurance, property taxes, and interest, we spent over $39,000 on carrying costs. The last major bucket of costs on this project were the costs of sale. Here's the closing statement. We spent $4,700 on transfer taxes, $11,000 on the buyer's agent commission, $1,200 on attorney's fees, and $1,200 on other miscellaneous fees, bringing our total closing costs to $18,000. My partner on this project also happened to be our real estate agent. If we had to pay him what we paid the buyer's agent, that would have cost us another $11,000. Additionally, because of some water damage in the basement and faulty mechanical items, we had to issue a seller credit of $12,000 to get this property over the finish line. This brought our total cost of disposition to $30,000 and our cash to close to $5,463 and 43 cents. So when you add these three buckets together, we spent $81,000 between buying, holding, and selling this property. That doesn't even include the inspections or appraisals that we did before we bought the property, nor does it include the property management, the grounds maintenance, or utility bills paid while we held on to the property. All in all, I think it could have been a lot worse and we're pretty lucky to get out of this asset with just a mid four figure loss. If we could go back in time knowing what we know now, here's how we do things differently. First, we would have got a title survey before we bought the property. If we had done that, we could have put the easement issue on the prior owner. Second, we'd immediately improve the vacant unit in this duplex. We would have put in new kitchen, new baths, new floors, and a fresh coat of paint. That would have cost us roughly $30,000, but it would have generated an additional $60,000 in sales price. 
Third, when the variance is minimal, take the cash offer with fewer contingencies. We ended up going with our highest offer, which also happened to be an FHA buyer. We knew the FHA were sticklers, but we couldn't predict how stubborn they would be with the easement issue. If we had just gone with our cash buyer, we probably would have saved ourselves five to six months of carrying costs and 12K in seller's credit. The fourth and final lesson learned on this project is that debt is typically safer than equity. Despite this project being upside down, my two lenders made their full return. Oftentimes when a lender sees that there's $75,000 of gross profit in a deal for me, they approach me and want to be an equity partner. However, I assure them that they're better off as lenders. Debt gets paid no matter what, and it's often the equity partner that gets left holding the bag. If you made it this far in the video and you're interested in investing alongside me, please click the link in the description down below to schedule a 30 minute call with me so we can discuss how I can help you achieve your real estate investing goals. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you want to watch more videos like this from me, click here to watch a video where I talk about the top 10 hidden costs when buying real estate. Finally, I put out a new video like this every single week, so if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I don't want you to miss the next one. All right, peace.